Um, I am just going to try and share my screen now. Um, so let's see if I can do that. Okay. Um, can we? That doesn't seem to be working. Okay. So I'm going to just go through this remotely. Okay. Um, my apologies, everyone. Obviously, Corona's got the better of us, which is great. Uh, so here we go. So the thing I'm going to talk to you today about is, is about really how you as an operator can accept cryptocurrency payments, how you can also do it properly, and then some, some key things to know. I also want to kind of run through uh, some of the benefits for both operators and kind of players themselves. So um, what I'm going to talk today, I'm going to break it down into, into five kind of key things. So, so the first thing is kind of who we at BCB are, how we fit into the crypto market, uh, and why we feel that we can kind of give this talk to this kind of subject. Um, the second thing is going to be the benefits of cr accepting crypto in, in gambling. Um, thirdly, I'm going to tell you how you can do it. Uh, and then fourthly, some, some kind of key points that I want to really run through um, that we've noticed are, are really prevalent to, to kind of this specific thing. Very finally, we're going to run through some questions. I'm not sure how I'm going to see them because nothing seems to be working, but bear with us and here we go. Okay, so BCB, so who are we? So we basically set up uh, in 2017, a bunch of ex kind of bankers, and we came into the cryptocurrency space to set up a, a cryptocurrency trading desk. Now, um, initially, the hardest thing we realized about kind of coming to the cryptocurrency space is fear, normal money, how it interacts with crypto and moving it around everywhere it touches crypto. So even just to do our basic job, which was kind of send and receive payments for the crypto trades, we had to set up all these kind of crazy payments trails for trial and error that in the end were actually so good that other kind of crypto businesses heard about it and wanted to use it. And this actually got the attention of the UK regulators, the FCA. Uh, and they approached us and they kind of said, look, this is a new industry. We don't know anything about it. We'd love you to be in the sandbox. And we'd love to sort of learn about crypto via you. And would you like to be the kind of first regulated crypto company? Fast forward to today, regulated in the UK as an API, regulated in Switzerland. And we now do three things as a business. So the first key thing is we still offer trading services. So we still offer offer um, all sorts of kind of cryptocurrency liquidity services. We offer going in and out of crypto. But a growing part of that first trading bucket is the ability to just do deliverable effects. Now, we bank a lot of different kind of crypto firms and managing the FX risk and exposure and kind of moving FX between multi-currency accounts is a big part of what we do and it's a growing part of what we do, which brings us on to the second thing we do. This is what we're known for now. So we offer banking to major crypto firms and we offer it also to firms who aren't in the crypto space who want to touch crypto, okay? And um, the way the kind of banking lay down in the industry is at the minute, in, in, in the US, you have US dollar banking kind of monopolized by two large banks. Beyond that, uh, especially in Europe, it's very, very patchy. Now, we've been lucky enough that, that we bank basically the majority of the large crypto firms. So we bank some of the world's largest crypto exchanges, OTC desks, and other household names. And the reason that's sort of important is because now they're all in our ecosystem, we can uh, improve and increase settlement times between these guys. So not only do we bank them and offer a really high service, but we also... Uh, increase kind of settlements times uh, and and push through payments uh, much quicker than if you were to say wait from a Hong Kong wire to New York, you know, which can take three or so days over the SWIFT network. So that's fairly key. We've also seen a lot more interest because we're so tech first uh, and we do bank high risk. We've seen a lot of interest uh, in the kind of like more high risk industries like entertainment and gambling. And, and we're now starting to kind of bank a lot more gambling firms Forex firms who just want kind of technologically friendly uh, uh, high service banking. The third thing we do, uh, which again, I can't show you on my screen apparently, but uh, is we can plug into kind of crypto custodians. So what's a custodian? A custodian is someone that can look after the crypto. So a lot of crypto firms sit on millions of dollars worth of crypto. It's a bearer asset, so you've got to keep it safe, a bit like gold or, or cash. Um, we're not custodian, but we plug into kind of custodians uh, as well. So 
that's sort of kind of what we do. When you log into kind of BCB online, you see all your bank accounts and you can see your kind of cryptocurrency kind of held in, in cold storage somewhere else. For, so from a risk management perspective, you can see all your crypto, all your fear, and you can send, receive, and trade between it. Pretty crucial. Um, so the kind of next thing I want to go through, that, that that's basically how we've had experience in this space. We've had a lot of gambling firms kind of come to us. Can, can we accept crypto and, and you know manage the payment and banking? I'll speak to that later. The next thing I want to run through is sort of the overall benefits of accepting cryptocurrency and gambling. So I'm going to break it down for the operators first, then I'm going to do the play. So firstly, the operator. So clearly, like the first thing you guys want to be able to do as operators is access a wider market. OK, you want to be able to reach the most customers uh, at possible. So to have crypto, all you need is a Wi-Fi connection. But not everyone in the world has access to banking and bank accounts, you know, especially in more developed nations. So you will gain access to kind of wider amounts of players. The next thing as well is, depending on kind of which jurisdictions you're in and which kind of normal currencies as an operator you can accept for gambling, um, you're going to remove an FX leg by accepting crypto. For instance, you might only accept kind of euros, US dollar, GBP when you have kind of Japanese customers who've got yen that need to kind of transfer it out of yen into kind of one of the currencies you accept. And and, and this can be kind of an FX leg, especially if you run it as well, that, that is kind of quite burdensome. So cryptocurrency is a really nice way around that. They're, they're all global currencies. Everyone has them. You can send them quickly. Uh, and, and that's sort of kind of a key thing, which leads into the next point. You avoid really high uh, bank, bank fees. So some bank... Pro, uh, processing fees, you know, it can be multiple percent, especially for kind of cards and um, crypto currencies. And it's quick. That's the next thing. They're really quick. You know, they can go in kind of seconds, if not minutes, depending on the cryptocurrency and the kind of um, the busyness of the network. Following this, another benefit for you is going to be uh, fraud, a massive reduction in fraud. Obviously, as an operator, one of the biggest problems you have is chargebacks. Okay, if it's cryptocurrency, you can't reverse that transaction. You know, it's sent; it's more secure. So you reverse the kind of time and the kind of operator burden, uh, the burden on kind of dealing with chargebacks, which it, which is pretty significant. Leads nicely into security as well. Um, Actually, the kind of like it's a bit of a myth that it's it's riskier kind of dealing online in cryptocurrency. It's not. It's it's actually quite quite safe, um, and and it can increase the security, especially when you can trace the roots of all the coins and the provenance of each coin. That can actually help con kind of compliance. Um, it also helps operators stay competitive. I know it's a slightly outdated kind of figure, but the, the only figure I could get on this was that in the industry, online casinos, about 15% of them accept cryptocurrency. Now, that figure is dated by about a year and a half. I would expect it to be a lot higher now. Um, so you want to stay competitive, especially when you look at the metrics of the type of demographics that gamblers and online gamblers are. They're more likely to have had crypto. Um, it's also kind of feeding nicely into the fact that, you know, as we said, online gamblers are more likely to have crypto. In fact, of people, and this is a recent study, of, pe of, of people that have done online gambling in the last year, those people, half of those people have traded crypto. And actually, of those people that have the crypto, they're more prone to trade high risk uh, assets like high risk equities. So they, they've got a higher risk appetite. So these are guys you're going to want as an operator in your casino and servicing them well. Coming over to the players, um, clearly, you know, if things are cheaper to send crypto and receive it and process it, then the fee reductions can actually be passed on to the players. And, and some kind of platforms do offer player bonuses for using crypto instead of fiat. Excuse me. Um, like I said, it, it, you get more access to more players. So in developing markets, you know, as long as you've got an internet collection, you can play online kind of casino games. Um, the fast settlement also kind of benefits the the player, which is good. Uh, and also kind of coming back to that security thing. Now, cryptocurrency offers privacy, not anonymity. Clearly, you still want to onboard these guys through the normal kind of KYC email process, but privacy, because when that transaction is sent, although it's publicly available on the blockchain, there's no personal information sent about the kind of uh, the payer to the payee. So the privacy is quite useful. And um, also, if you look at kind of since COVID's happened, 
I've seen a figure that Revolut has seen kind of 170% increase in the amount of payments that have gone towards kind of online gambling and gaming. That that's you know you you it's one of the few use cases uh, that still kind of um, so if you sorry if you look at the few places that actually accept crypto, you know gambling is very much one of them. It's a whole industry, and a large part of it is used for kind of sending kind of crypto to. Um, Gamblers online, like we said, are also more likely to use crypto. So clearly this services the needs of your existing clients. Um, actual kind of gambling for, on the blockchain can take two forms. It can be off-chain, which is what everyone knows, which is where you have a customer, an existing online casino. A customer sends their crypto to the online casino. Uh, that's what people know. There's also on-chain gambling, which actually uses the blockchain for the games. Now, that's growing in popularity because customers can verify that the games um, are not rigged. So it, it provides that extra level of comfort, which, which is pretty crucial for some players. Now we're going to talk about how. How do you accept your crypto? Okay. So first things first, you need to ensure that you are watertight in terms of kind of how you're laid out geographically and compliance and the regulation that affects crypto in the jurisdictions you operate. Clearly, it's different everywhere in a lot of places is actually quite murky and unclear. But how you structure yourself as an entity will really affect how and, and you know how easily you can uh, receive or send kind of crypto or use it. The next thing is crucial, and it's why BCB are in business, banking, okay? If you want to start accepting crypto payments, you will likely have a normal bank. As a normal operator, you will have your own banking. Now, most banks, have turned their backs on crypto. They don't want to bank crypto firms. Also, we're seeing in the last kind of three months, especially, but certainly over the last six months, uh, especially in Europe, a lot of banks that were sort of open to crypto are now really turning their back on it. Okay, so don't be surprised if you start accepting crypto payments or doing stuff with cryptocurrency and all of your banking, if all your operations gets frozen, or you even get unbanked. Okay, worst way. So make sure you have crypto friendly banking. I can't stress that enough. And that's certainly why we're in business. Um, the actual way, the method you go to kind of receiving crypto or paying it out is you can either use an all-in-one provider like BCB, or you can use a third-party uh, payment processor, something like BitGo. Um, actually, one of our clients, they do it fantastically. But if you use them, you're also going to need the crypto-friendly banking as well, guys. Okay. Um, just a few points to note here, okay, that the main things that I would kind of stress above all else, if you're going to be doing this, the first one we've mentioned it, but can't say enough, regulation. Just make sure you're watertight on regulation on where you operate and who you service, okay? Again, a lot of gray areas, but you'll need kind of legal advice and legal counsel on it and don't skimp on it. Second will be the coins you can accept. Make sure if you want to be an above board operation, you do not accept what's called privacy coins. Privacy coins um, are exactly that. Their provenance is private. You can't see where those transactions have come from. So they're more likely to have been used by money launderers and organized crime and other nefarious actors. So just be very, very careful with that. Third thing is that actually, you know, certainly from inside the industry, the wider crypto market is massively improving. Infrastructure is is basically there for a traditional industry to interact with us. And there's huge amounts of money pouring in from traditional companies and traditional financial services companies into crypto. They've seen the benefits it can have for kind of global payments and the global kind of financial system. And it's really now in that build phase, but we're starting to see the fruits of it kind of like springing forth. So it's worth being on the front foot with this. Fourthly, um, this is a big one, be aware of the price risk of the assets you're accepting. Clearly, if you accept a normal currency like GBP and US dollar, they're pretty steady. Even on a volatile day, we're talking like 2% moves. If you're accepting something like BTC, Bitcoin, probably the most well-known currency, then um, you've got to be aware it's a more volatile asset. Um, normally, on average, it will move. It will have like a daily volume, uh, a volatility movement of around 2%. But as we, we saw kind of in the COVID crash recently, it trades more like a highly volatile stock sometimes and actually tracks it. So you've just got to be careful with the underlying price risk. Now, there were ways around it, uh, but it's slightly kind of probably more complicated than we've got time for here. Um, 
One of the key things I would ask you to explore if you're interested is accepting what are called stable coins. So these are pegged to uh, a traditional currency. So an example would be something called USDC that a big company called Circle have that's pegged to the US dollar. Okay, all the benefits of a cryptocurrency in terms of speed and low low uh, transaction fees, um, but all the kind of um, benefits of a fiat currency as well in that it's kind of one-to-one -one backed and it's low volatility. The last thing that I would suggest is kind of compliance. So make sure your compliance are really aware of how crypto works, but it can actually be uh, of use to compliance. It can actually help and improve your overall kind of compliance and AML procedures because, like I said, most of the volatility uh, can be reduced and the provenance of each coin can be tracked, which is great. Most government agencies, when they receive, when they when they kind of catch out criminals now and they see they've been using um, cryptocurrency, a lot of the time they, they think it's great because they can actually track and see where this coin's moved and it can help them build evidence. So the old myth about kind of Bitcoin only being used for money laundering is, is sort of changed now with as technologies improved. Um, that's really it. I was going to just go on to kind of questions now. Um, I will try and have a look to see if I can see any of the questions anywhere, but the tech hasn't been wonderful. Here we go. Right. Um, Guys, yeah, firstly, I, I'm sorry I couldn't share my screen. Um, it, it did have the presentation with a lot of kind of key things on. Um, I would just point you to our, our kind of LinkedIn page, BCB Group, and you can kind of get in touch. Hopefully, we'll upload my presentation. You can kind of see it back. Um, and also, it has a link to our website. And please feel free to reach out kind of directly to our website straight after, uh, just referencing uh, the fact that you've seen me kind of on this conference and I, I can answer kind of questions in more detail. Um, but happy to, I can see the YouTube stream now, happy to kind of answer questions if, if you fancy typing them out. Yeah, hi guys, ready to accept kind of questions when you're ready. Thanks very much, Tiago. No, really appreciated, mate. Yeah, Tiago, we find a lot of people who are in countries where they don't accept kind of cryptocurrency payments. You know, there are certain countries like in the Middle East and um, they they readjust kind of where their entity is listed. So they, they will move their entity kind of out of uh, out of uh, out of scope of that. If there are any other questions, really happy to answer them, guys. Like, likewise. Oh, here we go. Oh, hi, Oliver. Do I think stablecoin volume will outgrow other cryptocurrencies? Actually, potentially, yes. So, if you actually look at kind of the stablecoin volume we see, that's certainly a huge kind of use case for cryptocurrency itself in the wider world. Clearly, stablecoins and cryptocurrency has benefits like cross-border fungibility speed of settlement low fees and that's really really useful for the kind of wider uh, crypto or and financial services market and um, and we've seen real use cases in kind of money remittance and, and kind of flow repatriation outside of certain jurisdictions because it's quicker and cheaper and um, so yeah i think we've got a real real kind of opportunity here for stablecoin flow to actually disrupt the wider kind of global payment system um, and we're starting to see the kind of green shoots of that certainly kind of in our business and um, thank you very much oliver for your question
Guys, any other questions or I will end it there. So you can handle kind of stable coins, crypto trading, and normal fear, as I've said, in BCB. So with that all-in-one shop, we do banking for kind of crypto companies or companies that touch crypto. We also do liquidity services, and we help you kind of with the custody piece as well and link it in in a really, really high service model. Tiago, did you have a question about money laundering or were you alluding to cryptocurrencies being for money laundering. So operators do, I, I did sort of kind of touch on this. So there are some firms, third party payment processes, like one of our clients, BitGo, they, they help accept kind of Bitcoin and spit out cash. Now, they're just that. You still need the kind of crypto banking. So someone like us, we can do everything. We can kind of take in the crypto. We can bank you with the fear. And we can turn that crypto into fear. And we can all do that in a really above board way and really, really quick. Because everyone that we need to use for that is in our ecosystem. Well, no, because, I mean, for instance, we're regulated and we're heavily regulated and we have very strict kind of anti-money laundering procedures. Um, we actually even employ certain members of our, our firm to kind of work alongside our partner banks as well to back this up. Um, so when we onboard a client, we go through strict onboarding processes and we want to see the provenance of all the cash they have. When we're actually looking at crypto transactions, we use analysis software to kind of track the provenance of those coins, where it's come from. So we know that it's not on some kind of sanctions list or a watch list at all as well. In the same way that we have transaction monitoring for all our fiat side for, for, for the clients as well. Pleasure, Tiago, mate. I'm not sure what uh, owner, I don't read Cyrillic, but uh, Lengrandish is matey. Guys, I'll give it uh, about 10, 20 seconds for any more questions. Uh, and then it will just be a big thank you. And it will be to kind of refer you onto our website, BCB Group. Uh, you can just hit the info button and, and kind of send emails to us via those means if you've got any other kind of follow-ups. Guys, thanks very much for the attention today. Really appreciate that. Sorry for the technical issues, but, you know, it's still pretty amazing that we can do this while we're all on lockdown. Um, and thanks very, very much for all your time. Take care.